Ever looked at the sea of coffees out there and wondered what the differences are? Welcome to the Taste Test channel, and this week we'll be taking an impartial look at coffee regions around the world, including the most expensive coffee on the planet, to discover what the differences are and how some of the most highly regarded coffee beans around the globe differ in taste. As always, just for fun, we'll be awarding our Taste Test channel Best in Class award to the winner. If you're new to the channel, just hit the subscribe button to ensure you don't miss out on any of our regular taste tests. So as you can see, we've bought these packs from various coffee houses online, but it's not a review about them. This is about where the coffee comes from and the differences in taste between coffee from one country or region to another. So a quick snapshot about coffee itself, which we've been drinking for centuries with its origins in Ethiopia well over 500 years ago. Coffee grows as a cherry-like fruit, mostly in the tropics, in the coffee belt spanning the equator. Once ripened and picked, the pip or bean of the cherry is extracted via various methods and sold to importers to be roasted and packaged. Almost all varieties you buy come from either the Arabica or Robusta plant, or a blend of both. Robusta is generally cheaper, being more robust, but has a bitter taste to it. Arabica, or Arabica, on the other hand, is considered superior and smoother in taste, but it's harder to grow at higher altitudes and therefore costs more. Whether you buy your coffee as instant ground or beans, the country and region it comes from, so Colombia, Kenya, Costa Rica, etc., each has its own unique climate, soil and growing conditions, so will significantly affect the taste. As you may know, we choose six contenders per taste test, so we're not covering everything here, but we've chosen some of the most highly regarded and interesting coffees from around the globe, all from the Arabica plant, and three of which are considered to be the world's finest. So our lineup from around the world this week is as follows. From the birthplace of coffee itself, Yergachev from Ethiopia. The most expensive coffee on the planet, Panama Geisha. From the middle of the Pacific, the highly prized and world leading Hawaiian Kona. Renowned for high quality from Central America, a Costa Rican blend. Globally revered and a James Bond favorite, Jamaican Blue Mountain. And finally, not the largest producer, Brazil, but its neighbour, Colombia, is our higher rated South American choice with Colombian Bucaramanga. Moving on to cost, to test these coffees at their very freshest, we've bought them as beans, direct from online coffee houses, who medium roast them to order. But you can, of course, buy them pre-ground. And either way, you don't need a fancy machine. For the budget conscious, we'll show how, with just a cheap grinder and a French press, you can grind beans at home and enjoy coffee at its best. Price-wise, these cover a complete range, plus they're available through different producers, coffee houses and brands, so the cost is going to differ depending on where you're based, who you buy them from, the grade of bean and the volume purchased. I bought the smallest amount of each, less than 250 gram sample packs, and you can see the price that I paid per 100 grams is shown below. However, if you're a regular coffee drinker and you find a variety you prefer, you're likely to be buying in minimum kilo packs, which brings the cost down considerably. As you can see though, Panama Geisha being the most expensive coffee bean in the world is of course the dearest and it can sell for up to six times as much as this at auction depending on the farm it's from and the batch being sold. Next in price is Jamaican Blue Mountain and Hawaiian Kona, the other two of the world's finest, with Colombian being the cheapest. So in summary, this is Costa Rica, this is Costa Fortune, which tastes better? We'll find out shortly. Nutritional wise, our normal fat, sugar, salt and energy analysis is obviously not relevant to coffee, which happily contains none of them, but a point of interest, the Arabica bean has about half the caffeine of the cheaper Robusta. But exact amounts can vary greatly depending on the bean, the coffee strength and brewing times. But how will these all differ in taste? Well, that's why we're here. So we're going to start fittingly with the birthplace of coffee, Ethiopia in Africa, where ancient coffee forests grew wild on the Ethiopian plateau. Legend has it that a local herder saw his goats dance with vigour after eating coffee berries. He brought them to a monastery where they were proclaimed to be the devil's work and thrown on the fire. The berries, that is, not the goats. Only to you turn the decision when they smelt the heavenly aroma of roasting coffee beans. Thereafter, the monks used them to help stay awake during nightly prayers. This coffee is from the Yergachev region, known for its high quality, and purchased from Sea Island Coffee Company of London. And what we're going to do is open all six packets first, so we can compare the beans visually side by side, and then we'll move on to the tasting. Next, the most expensive coffee bean in the world, Panama Geisha from Central America, which is said to have redefined luxury coffee, and happily, vastly outselling records set earlier by Kopi Luwak, beans plucked from the droppings of civet cats. Yep, you heard me correctly, and sadly, that's caused cruel factory farming of the animals since. 
The geisha bean, however, was ignored for decades due to the intense work required to get it to grow, but painstaking efforts on mountain slopes at over 5,000 feet has resulted in prices of up to $1,000 at auction for just one pound of coffee. This particular handpicked bean is from the private collection by Hacienda La Esmeralda, a multi-award winning farm in the Bouquet region of Panama. Altitude, volcanic soil and the microclimates of Bouquet yield a near perfect bean, so it will be a rare privilege to try it. This one is also from Sea Island Coffee and I'll look forward to tasting it after we've opened the others. Next, also considered one of the world's finest and priciest coffees, Hawaiian Kona. These coveted beans are grown on the fertile slopes of volcanoes in Hawaii's main island, where a microclimate of sun, cloud, mild nights and rainfall mean they mature slowly to a fuller size and flavour. In the past, the name's been misused, but now only coffee made in the Kona region can use the name. If buying it ground, just make sure it says 100% Kona to ensure you're getting the real deal. The best of these beans are grown at over 2,000 feet, and that's where these ones come from, via a family-owned farm on the high slopes of Mauna Loa, purchased online from coffeedirect.co.uk. And I'll look forward to tasting them shortly. Next, another Central American contender, we have Costa Rican coffee, which is renowned for high quality. In fact, it's the only country in the world where it's illegal to produce anything other than Arabica, the good stuff. With its nutrient-rich volcanic soils, mountainous landscapes and reliable wet and dry seasons, growing conditions are ideal. Plus, most of their coffee grows at high altitudes, so the beans mature slowly and farmers have to hand-pick crops, meaning full of flavours and only the ripest beans. The country has eight growing regions with varying climates and a diverse range of flavours. The beans I have here are from a mix of farms, so not single origin, but all grown at over 6,000 feet and again sourced via coffeedirect.co.uk. Next, from the Caribbean, we have James Bond favourite Jamaican Blue Mountain. Look up the world's best coffees and you'll almost always find this one near or at the top. Only beans grown on the high, steep slopes of Jamaica's Blue Mountain can use the name, and the terrain makes it difficult and expensive to harvest. The cool, misty climate, rich soil and high rainfall, however, produces coffee that makes it worth the effort. And these ones are number one grade, from the famous Gold Cup Estate, the very highest of the Blue Mountain growers, so the best of the best. I bought these from coffeebeanshop.co.uk and can't wait to try them. Finally, from South America, we have Colombian coffee. Although Brazil grows the most coffee of any country, its neighbour Colombia is regarded as growing the finest South American beans, mostly Arabica, and it's a way of life for nearly half a million coffee-growing families. Most beans are grown in the Andes Mountains, where the hilly soil provides varying climates, and being located exactly on the equator, the country also benefits from two harvesting seasons. We've chosen Colombian Buckara manga beans, grown in a lush plateau 4,000 feet or more above sea level, and purchased from coffeebeanshop.co.uk. So looking at them all side by side, we can spot any differences more clearly. And it's at this point I really wish we had smell of vision because the aroma right now is amazing. There are colour distinctions, but it seems to be in sets of two, so that's definitely going to be slight differences in roasting methods of the three coffee houses, despite all being medium roasted. There is, however, some variation in size and shape, with Ethiopian being the smallest, followed by Jamaican, which are very rounded and consistent looking. Panama Geisha varies in size but contains the largest beans of the group, followed by Colombian, which are quite fat and uniform. And Hawaiian Kona are rounded in shape and less elongated. But now that we've got all that covered, let's make some coffee. Now, there's all sorts of fancy coffee makers out there and I could have used my trusty one, but I wanted to show just how cost-effectively you can enjoy coffee at its freshest. All you need is a grinder and a French press. The grinder cost me below £30 or $35. I went for ceramic because the cheaper metal ones can shed metal into your coffee and the French press was just £14, so sub $17. And we just pop our beans in the grinder. There's an adjuster on the bottom which alters the size of the grind, coarser for a French press to avoid residue, or finer for filter coffee. And we grind the beans like so. And you're left with something like this. Now, full disclosure, the novelty of grinding by hand does get old fast. That could be how much I had to do for this test, but do be aware you can get electric grinders for not a whole lot more. Then we pop the grinds in our French press, add water that's recently boiled, stir to avoid dry clumps, top up, 
and leave. And we're ready to serve. So we've got a cup of Ethiopian Yagachev, Panama Geisha, Hawaiian Kona, Costa Rican, Jamaican Blue Mountain, and Colombian Bucaramanga. All of these have of course been brewed for exactly the same time, and at the moment there's very little variation visually. Now the best coffees are commonly enjoyed black. In the background I'm going to be trying all six of these black and white to ensure a thorough test, but for now let's add the same small amount of milk to each because that will allow us to see any colour differences more clearly. And I can now detect some variation. The Ethiopian, Hawaiian and Colombian are all slightly lighter than the others, with Hawaiian Kona being the lightest, and the other three are somewhat darker, but it is subtle. Now, I don't know about you, but I am more than ready for a cup of coffee. So let's move on to the tasting. And we'll start with Ethiopian Yergachev. So the aroma is not super strong, but it has bitter notes in it. The flavour, however, is strong and punchy with a high pitched roasted taste like toasted nuts and acidic top notes with a hint of red currant, perhaps. It's thin and light in the mouth, so not full bodied with a clean, slightly watery finish. Overall, it's a mix of high and low tones, but perhaps lacking mid-range flavour to give it depth. Nevertheless, perfectly acceptable and not at all unpleasant. Next, the moment I've certainly been waiting for, the world's most expensive coffee, Panama Geisha. Well, this has a much fuller bouquet than the last one, slightly petally or floral. Wow, that is incredibly smooth and rounded coffee. No harsh notes and really full bodied, heavier in the mouth somehow. There's depth of flavour, but no jagged edges. It's full of subtlety with a floral creaminess of honeydew melon and delicate grapefruit acidity. But the unexpected thing is a complete lack of coffee breath afterwards. Five minutes later, the aftertaste is fresh and zingy like you've just had an Earl Grey tea. This is exceptionally good coffee and the more you drink, the softer it gets. I can certainly see what the fuss is all about. Next, another of the world's finest, Hawaiian Kona. So there's a leafy sweetness in the aroma and the taste is much stronger and punchier than the geisha. There's roasted bitter notes of bark and tobacco, grassiness and a much drier finish. But what it does have is the smooth, creamy and full bodied texture again. Not to the same degree as the geisha, but much more so than the Ethiopian. It's not as clean on the palate, it has the classic long coffee aftertaste and also a wine-like acidity and natural sweetness in the finish. In summary, this is rich and full of character, ideal for those who want a smooth quality coffee with more kick. Next we'll try the Costa Rican blend. So this has the strongest aroma so far with full, slightly harsh toasted notes evident. There's a punchy initial coffee hit and a nutty flavour, far less body than the Kona or the Geisha, but it's like a softer, fuller bodied and richer version of the Ethiopian with more mid-range tones. There's a very dry finish in the mouth like bitter walnuts or rhubarb and a very long coffee aftertaste with some butteriness in the finish. In summary, this is a good strong coffee, but not exceptional. Next, Jamaican Blue Mountain, another of the world's top rated coffees. So I'm getting a rich aroma with hints of iced coffee cake, would you believe? Okay, once again, this is exceptionally smooth. There's naturally sweet hazelnut praline notes coming through a mellow background and a hint of fruity raspberry acidity. It's got a soft, clean finish, not as clean or full bodied as the geisha, but very smooth, creamy and full flavoured. Excellent. Finally, we'll try Colombian Bucaramanga. So the aroma is very different on this one, quite vegetal and watery. Wow, again, very cabbagey notes in the flavour. If I didn't know better, I'd think the water had been used to boil broccoli. It has a slight fartiness of cabbage and green flavour of gooseberries. It's very light bodied and thin, quite a dry finish with a sweet and acidic aftertaste. Colombian coffees are often chocolatey, but I'm not getting that at all on this one. Other than a sweetness, it almost tastes like the sugar in there. Overall, it has a clean thinness to it, but it's an acquired taste that's not to my palate. It's the only one of the six that I would turn down if offered a cup. So that covers how they all differ in taste. And now that we've tasted them all, as always, just for fun, we award our Taste Test Channel winners and Best in Class award. Now, I'm a good food enthusiast, but I'm also a bit of a cynic. And I'm the first to admit there's a lot of expensive food out there suffering from what I would call Emperor's New Clove Syndrome. People are signing imagined greatness to things due to hype or scarcity or simply to follow a fad. But there is no question in my mind that some of these coffees have earned their merits and reputation with very good reason.
And speaking of expense, they are pricey. But the crazy thing is, if you're one of the millions of people who buys a daily coffee from a cafe or Starbucks, etc., then you might be amazed to learn that a decent sized cup of the finest coffee in the world made at home might not be vastly different in cost from cafe prices at around this for Blue Mountain or this for Geisha, even based on the higher cost small quantities I was buying at. So food for thought, perhaps. And also bear in mind these were mostly single origin coffees, so one type of bean, but there are very good inexpensive blends, combining perhaps the high notes of one bean with the low notes of another. I received an excellent five bean sample pack, for example, from one of the coffee houses I ordered from. And of course you could create your own. But our top three winners this week are as follows. Winning third place, Hawaiian Kona. For those who like more punch in their coffee with aromatic leafiness and the benefit of superior smoothness, this is a lovely option. Winning second place, Jamaican Blue Mountain. Naturally sweet, smooth, nutty and mellow. James Bond clearly had good taste. This is a coffee I could drink a lot of. Really excellent. But in first place this week in the coffee beans around the world, the Taste Test Channel Best in Class Award goes to... Panama Geisha from Hacienda La Esmeralda. This is without doubt the smoothest, creamiest coffee I have ever tasted. Full of delicate but rounded flavours and an exceptionally clean finish, it really is superb. So well done to Panama Geisha. And as always, taste is subjective and this is purely my point of view, but I hope it's provided some useful insights. So I've certainly enjoyed making this episode slightly high on caffeine by now. I really hope you've enjoyed watching it. And if you have, everyone who supports our new and growing channel makes a huge difference. So don't forget to like, share, and of course subscribe to ensure you don't miss out on any of our regular taste tests. Meanwhile, thanks a latte and see you next time.